I think we understand now that there are uh, differences in terms of what our standards should be based on the tumor biology. So for example, a HER2 positive tumor, we're going to use something combined with HER2 targeted therapy. For the majority of tumors, the 80% that are not HER2 positive, uh, it, it then again depends on biology. So we can really divide loosely our tumors into three clinical biologies. One, the slow growing, hormone responsive, many different types of hormone therapy prior to coming to chemotherapy. In those patients, the choice of first line chemotherapy it's probably not important. Those patients usually have a good response to chemotherapy and often capecitabine is a good first choice. But for patients who have more aggressive, more rapidly growing upfront hormone resistance or triple negative disease, the choice of chemotherapy may be more important. And I don't think we really know the answer to that yet. Uh, it does appear that in those patients, uh, it's better to start with an intravenous chemotherapy, particularly if there's rapidly advancing disease and you want to see a rapid response. The choice of therapy is going to depend on what a patient had in the adjuvant setting, how long their disease-free interval is. What we know from certainly my trial, CLGB40502, is that sometimes older agents can be as effective, primarily because there's a little less toxicity, and so uh, they are better able to be given for longer periods of time. Uh, but really, we need a little bit more data before we know if there's a single optimal agent for uh, a specific subclass of uh, uh, breast cancer. I don't think that we know that combination chemotherapy is better for any one group than single agent therapy when you can administer many different single agents sequentially. If you have limited options, there are situations, I think, where combination chemotherapy is better because you only can give treatment in the first or second line.